Hey guys, it's Kenny here from the Fantasy Golf Degenerates and the Fantasy Fanatics, bringing you my favorite cash game plays for this week's Farmers Insurance Open. Now, before we get into the Farmers, let's uh, recap last week's Career Builder Challenge and my four picks. Uh, it was a pretty good week. Went four for four. All four of my picks went through the cut, and one of my picks actually won. So let's go over them. First was CH3, Charles Howell III. He finished in 12th place. Solid performance by him. Another top 15 notched on his belt. Next was John Ram, who finished 34th. Uh, struggled a little bit on par fives. He was only minus two on the par fives last week. Uh, they were sort of easy, so that was a little bit shocking. He should have finished a little bit higher than he did, but I'll take the made cut in cash games. Uh, next was Luke List. Uh, was doing well the first three days, uh, was was in it, and then uh, faded on Sunday with a plus one. Still made the cut, finished in 41st place. And my final pick was Hudson Swafford, at, uh, who actually won the tournament. So if you use these four guys, more than likely you won in cash games this week, unless you did really poorly on your other two picks. Um, so it was a solid week, and I'm 7 for 8 so far this season. Uh, in made cuts, so it's a pretty good start here on the Fantasy Fanatics for my cash game cornerstones. So, let's move on to the Farmers Insurance Open. Um, first off, it's, uh, it's going to be played on two separate courses this year, uh, like usual, at Torrey Pines, the North Course and the South Course. Uh, the North Course had some renovations this past year. It widened the fairways and removed bunkers added about 200 yards, uh, added new greens with bent grass, and actually made the greens larger. Uh, this is definitely the easier of the two courses. You definitely want to uh, score well here, especially on the par fives. All of them are reachable, uh, and there's a reachable par four. So golfers need to go out here and put in a good score before they get to the south course, which is a monster. It's a 7,700-yard long uh, par 72 with long par fives that average, you know, close to 600 yards for each par five. Really thick, rough, large bunkers surrounding both the fairways and greens. The greens are undulating with a little bit of with a good amount of slope. Uh, the main stats I'm going to be looking for this week are going to be par five scoring and driving distance. There's definitely a few more stats that I'm going to be looking for as well, but you can find them on my expert model on the fantasyfanatics.com. So on the fantasy fanatics uh, on the spreadsheet this week, I'm going to be looking at using 50% in key stats, 25% in current form, and 25% in course history. I'm going a lot higher on course history this week than last week. I think experience at the tough south course will be helpful. Uh, also, since Poana Greens are only on a few courses uh, the golfers play every year, and the Poana Greens are going to be on the south course. Um, I want my golfers in my cash lineup that are used to it. Seven of the last eight winners here had a previous top ten here uh, before their win. So let's move on to the picks. Um, let's start up top. I like Dustin Johnson at $11,100. He definitely checks all the boxes I'm looking for this week. He's long, crushes par fives, makes a ton of birdies. He played well last week, finishing second in Abu Dhabi. There could be a little risk of jet lag or fatigue, but I'm not paying too much attention to that uh, since these top guys usually travel the world to play, and they should be used to it. Uh, he doesn't have the best course history here, uh, but during the last year or so, within the last 18 months, Dustin Johnson decided to switch from a from a draw off his drive to hitting a, a, a nice cut off his uh, driver. Uh, this should be helpful this week since a lot of the longer holes on this course have a slight light, uh, have a slight left to right dog leg. Uh, hitting his accurate cuts should help him and I think it will lead to him playing better on this course than he has in the past. You know, he's still exceptionally long with that cut and he has been more accurate which will be helpful with these narrow fairways at the south course and the thick rough. All right, so next up, it's going to be Gary Woodland at $8,600. Really solid form coming in, making his last eight cuts in a row on tour with four top tens in that span. 
He's played really well his last two times out uh, with a second at Mayakoba and a sixth place at the Sony Open. He's also made all seven of his cuts here with a top 10 and an 18th place finish just last year. He fits the mold of golfers I'm looking for this week. Long off the tee, plays par 5 as well, good from the rough, which is going to be helpful since nearly 50% of all drives on the south course land in the thick rough. Um, so it's definitely going to be beneficial for him to be a good rough player on his approach shots. Uh, next up, it's going to be a familiar face. I've used him. Uh, this will be the third week I'm talking about him, but if we're on the West Coast. We can't get away from him. It's going to be Charles Howell the third at $7,300. You know, his price seems really cheap for someone who's made five consecutive top 15s on tour. Last week, he was $9,900. This week, he is $7,300. So that's a $2,600 price decrease for a guy who's been playing exceptionally well. He has great course history here. He's made 12 of his last 13 cuts at Toy Pines with eight top 16 finishes. Really not too much to say here. Uh, price is good. Form is good. Course history is good. You know, lock and load. Chucky three sticks in your cash game lineups once again this week. All right, my final pick. It's going to go down. It's, you can call it a value pick as well. It's, it's a little bit lower than I normally go, but I feel comfortable with it this week. I'm going on Martin Laird at $6,500. Uh, Laird, he's going to be one of the highest on golfers under $7,000 this week, but I really don't care, especially for cash games. Ownership's not really that big of a deal uh, when it comes to double-ups and head-to-heads uh, and 50-50s. Uh, you know, he's super chalk, but I think he'll be worth it. He's made all four of his cuts so far in the 2016-2017 season with three top 15s. He also made four cuts in a row at Torrey Pines with a seventh in 2015 and an eighth place finish in 2016. Now, if you look at his stats just for this 2016-2017 season, I know it's a small sample size, but you can get sort of an idea of how he's been playing. Um, it looks like every facet of his game is on point. Like, he's 12th in total driving so far this year with above average distance and really good accuracy off the tee. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Hudson Swafford won last week. He's, you know, length and accuracy. He's also six in strokes gain approach, so his iron play has been really, really good this year. And he's even 60th in strokes gain putting for the year. You know, at $6,500, he's a great salary saver. So you can easily pay up for DJ or uh, whomever else you like up top. All right, so let's review. My four favorite cash game plays this week are going to be Dustin Johnson at $11,100. Gary Woodland at $8,600, Charles Howell III at $7,300, and Martin Laird at $6,500. All right, guys, good luck. Win some money. Uh, make sure you check out all the other really solid info on the FantasyFanatics.com, their strategy center, their spreadsheet. Everything you need is on that site. So once again, good luck, and I'll see you guys next week.